Hey, happy Tuesday morning. Glad to be with you is we're in a time of devotions together. And if you've just stumbled across us and found us via Facebook or someone else's shared post or through YouTube, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And thanks for being a part of New Live Church as we continue kind of in our weekend discussion a little bit further. As we're kind of in this topic of on purpose, in this last weekend, we leaned into this idea of get to. We don't have to, we get to. In fact, around New Life, we say that there is a get to attitude or a get to spirit of this whole part. Now, you just need to know that in our home, we've kind of joked around that because we brought it into a lot of other things. And, you know, we'll just kind of make the state, hey, you don't have to, this is a get to. And we'll kind of put that in some different places because um, we so value that idea. But I want to look at it in a unique way today, found in kind of Luke chapter 17, verse 11. It reads this way. It says, as Jesus continued on towards Jerusalem, he reached the border. Um, as he entered the village there, ten men with leprosy stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and he said, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, he came back to Jesus, shouting, praise God. He fell on the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, didn't I heal ten? Where are the other nine? Has no one else returned to give God glory except this foreigner? And then Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. This is a unique story. And to be honest, there's a lot going on in it. There's a part of why it brings attention to him being a Samaritan, meaning a guy that probably shouldn't have known better. It sounds like the other nine potentially were of Jewish descent and had heard stories and had faith beliefs that were kind of leading up to this and some unique parts that were going into it. Why is it that out of the 10, only one of them saw the need to come back and and we kind of almost want to victimize the other. And, And in full disclosure, if I had been dealing with leprosy for years, separated from my wife, kids, family, parents on down the line, and I was healed... I think I would have had great excitement to go and see all those that I'd been distanced from. I think for the first time, I would want to be able to kiss my wife again, be able to hold hands with my kids, show up to a dinner and be inside, all of these things. And so please, I I don't see anything wrong, but we see something special where this one guy had this slow down moment to say, hey, before all that other stuff happens, let me put in place some thanksgiving, some appreciation. And so I want to talk about it in the topic of worship. That worship is not a have to, it's a get to. This guy did not see this uh, remarkable thing like, hey, I know I've got all this fun stuff to do, but I just have to go back and, and thank Jesus. No, I think he saw it as a get to. He falls on his knees and prays and celebrate, or excuse me, extends praise and celebrates uh, from this overflow of joy and, and the freedom to do so as a get to. But growing up, I saw kind of praise and worship as a have to. It wasn't something I fully understood. It wasn't something I got. But the more I realized what Christ had done in my life, it moved from a have to to a get to. When I realized that, guess what? I had a death sentence like these guys with leprosy. There was a death sentence on my life. There was a sin passed and the payment was death. And it wasn't just because of the Bible. I knew it. I was a mess. And all of a sudden I sensed and felt that through salvation, God has redeemed me, had wiped away my past. You know what my response was? To give worship, to give praise. And now I'm learning to grow in that. I'm learning to become expressive in my worship. I'm learning to become out loud with my celebration of my love and, and care for him. Why? Because those were all things that he has done for me. This wasn't something he had done in private. No, he has publicly taken a stand for his affection and his care towards me. And so when it comes to worship, yeah, I think this is an area I want to grow in. Though I don't get all the elements and dynamics of the story, but I would tell you this. I think I know who I'd want to be in that story. I think if I was in that story, I would want to be the guy that came back and said thank you. I think I would want to be the one that slowed down in all that was going on in life to have room and margin to give God glory and praise for the incredible work he's done. So what does that look like in our daily lives and our parts? Let me encourage you in some practical ones. If you've not begun to start an attitude of gratitude towards God, I want to encourage it. 
throughout your day that you just stop and go, God, thanks for my family. Thank you for my career. Thank you for this, that. Just constantly let there be that. And then in addition, figuring out how to bring some praise and worship into your life. For me, it's having some Pandora um, kind of playlists ready to go that I just click on them. And all of a sudden in my car or at the beginning of my work time or devotional or some tar- certain times around the house, I'm just beginning to put some worship music on and singing along and letting those words begin to be lifted up to God to give him glory. For others, it's um, kind of a maybe even more practical, where we do this with our family, whether it's music with our kids and singing along and and teaching those dynamics. Maybe it's slowing down at kind of our dinner table and and giving kind of, hey, we want to take just a moment and and share some things that we're thankful for God about, these kind of things. The other one for me is that going to church on a weekend is already a decision that's been made. Our, Our corporate worship with other believers happens on Sundays. And so we don't get to Saturday and go, man, what's the schedule look like? Is, is Sunday apart? No, we see going to church as a get to, not a have to. We get to. I anxiously look forward. It sets the tone and the atmosphere for my upcoming week. I, I love it. And so those are just some, part, some practical steps in, in this part of recognizing that worship, gratefulness, praise, not a have to is a get to. Now, here's the funny part in all of these, that I came into these at a certain point but I've learned how to grow in them. I'm learning how to grow as a, a more passionate worshiper, a more expressive worshiper. I'm learning to be, um, how to become more grateful and thankful. Because honestly, um, it's easy to get my eyes on everything else. So this one area, this isn't a have to, it's a get to. All 10 were healed, but one of them, one of them exemplified characteristics I want as a part of my life. It's great that God forgave me. Um, I, I love that. But I'm not going to just receive that and act like it was nothing. No, I'm going to slow down and give him ample praise. Can I pray for us? Dear Lord, thank you for our time together. I pray, Lord, that we would grow in this area. We would learn how to express our thankfulness, our celebration, praise that you are worthy of. And we don't do it because we have to, and this is something you force. Lord, this is a get to. My life is better for it. My life is more fulfilled. I I feel more at peace. I feel more content. I feel more complete in the midst of all of this. So as a community, as a group of people together, let us grow in this area. In your incredible name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you soon.